my car because if I'm in the restaurant. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's okay, Al. Um, yeah. yeah, that sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This is, this is great. We've got about 40 folks registered for today's webinar. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling fall. I am like, where are my coats? Holy tamole. Like, it just seemed like overnight. I mean, I know fall's here. We're in October 26th. But I just kind of thought this, like the summer would just be forever. I don't know. We, are, we've had such great weather. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's not realistic. That's definitely not realistic. We'll get ready for the rain tomorrow. Uh, we've got, we were just talking about earlier, we have a West Des Moines Leeds event tomorrow night at Heart of Iowa. So um, that's going to be, that's going to be really fun. So, but we'll have our rain gear on. Well, I'm excited that you're here today for our West Des Moines Edge event. And these events, we like to dig deep into key core sectors that are vital to the city of West Des Moines, to our region. And today we're going to be talking about retail, hospitality, those two key industries. I mean, if you look at West Des Moines, we've got our beautiful Valley Junction, rich in history, history. and heritage. We have our Jordan Creek Mall area, which draws people from all around the Midwest, uh, thousands and thousands of people every year. We've got our West Glen area, uh, and we've got just really cool boutiques scattered throughout uh, West Des Moines. And then we've got our amazing restaurants, which are doing you know, great business right now. Everybody, I think, is ready to get back out into the restaurants, um, eat safely among their friends. So we're excited to hear from Al a little bit about the restaurant industry and how that is going. It certainly has been a, a wild ride these last couple of years. So again, I just want to thank all of our panelists for their time today. I know, you know, running a retail store like Momere, you know, it's 24-7. Uh, running a restaurant like Big Al's Barbecue is also 24-7. And you know, and those small business owners, my heart goes out to you guys because uh, this has been a really a wild, a wild time, right? So especially for you, you uh, small business owner, beautiful people. So again, thanks so much for being here today. We are going to hear from Steve Freevert, Al Lucinda, Brianna Snyder, and Meredith Wells. And they're going to give us some of their words of wisdom about their industries, past, present, and future. And we're really excited. We're also excited to hear more about the growth of Valley Junction because a lot of cool things are going on in Valley Junction. So super excited about this. In the meantime, I would like to introduce Tom Florian, Director of Membership and Growth. And he is going to uh, talk about our sponsor, Bankers Trust. So thanks, Tom. Well, thank you, Catherine, and thank you again to our panelists for joining us for today's conversation, and thank you all for attending to hear from our great panelists. It's my pleasure to just recognize Bankers Trust, who is the presenting sponsor of today's webinar. Uh, Bankers Trust, along with a lot of our members, are very instrumental in us being able to provide this great programming to our members and, and attendees for these programs. And while today, uh, no representative from Bankers Trust is able to join us um, for today's webinar. I do want to give them a quick shout out and thank them for their investment in this program, as well as many other programs that we have here at the chamber. So next time you see someone from Bankers Trust, please share a word of thanks. So with that, I will send it back over to Catherine. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you. Just a little reminder, keep your mics muted, if you will, and feel free to use that chat box. So show appreciation for our speakers today. Send them your words of love and encouragement, uh, especially during these crazy times. So we do encourage you to use that chat box. If you have any questions too, uh, we may have time on the end uh, of our great speakers here to ask some questions. This does go really fast though, but uh, we'll try to get to everybody's questions too. But thanks for using that chat box. And I'm now excited to introduce Steve Freevert, who is executive director with the Historic Valley Junction Foundation. I think Steve has been in this role for five months now. I'm kind of guessing. Oh, but... no. <laughs> uh, three yeah. months today. <laughs> okay, three months today. So yeah. I did to learn, learn, Steve. So thank you. It seems like a lifetime. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, you know, being new to the area and, and new to, you know, I, I've been in Valley Junction before, um, but, uh, but being new to the metro area, I don't know how, how much people realize um, the reputation that this area has throughout the state and throughout the, the Midwest. Um, 
at a time when a lot of uh, retail districts, whether it's a mall or a downtown or a strip mall uh, or a big box store, at a time when a lot of them are, are suffering, uh, and, and not just you know in the last six months or two years, but it's it's been an ongoing thing. Uh, our area has shown just tremendous growth, and, and it's something to be uh, really grateful for um, because there are a lot of places that really cannot say that. Um, I think. Um, well, I mean, take a step back. I'll tell you a little bit about what we have going on in Valley Junction, then I kind of talk in broader terms. So, um, uh, you know, we have about 160 uh, locally owned independent businesses here in the district. It's a really pretty tight district. It's essentially 10 square blocks, um, you know, for five blocks of Fifth Street. Um, and most of that retail and restaurant activity is taking place in really two or three blocks. Um, we have a waiting list for businesses, uh, retail and restaurants that want to open in our district uh, who uh, are having difficulty finding a place, uh, which is a wonderful problem to have, it, but it is still a problem. So, um, so one of my tasks is to make sure that we're making the best use of the, our existing assets, um, whether that's buildings or streetscapes or partnerships with the city, uh, with sponsoring entities, and other businesses, things like that. Um, because of the, the growth in, um, in population and in the economy of this area, you know, 20% population uh, increase in West Des Moines in 10 years. Uh, not many other places around the country can say that, certainly not in the Midwest. So because of that, uh, we have a very compact district with limited boundaries to our district. And uh, so there's an immense amount of pressure to to build more and to fill in everything we can. Uh, so I think that's created some friction in terms of uh, new buildings going up and replacing buildings um, that have been there for a long time, whether or not they're historic officially or not. Um, th there's a sense of memory of those buildings and people certainly who've, who've lived here for a long time. Um, I think there's a little bit of alarm by all the changes, but um, within the last two years, uh, it, They've, if anything, we've learned that we have to be responsive to those changes and learn to uh, to be adaptable, um, whether it's in our personal lives or professional lives uh, or uh, or elsewhere. So um, right now we're seeing, I think there's four projects uh, essentially underway, only one block, the 300 block of Fifth Street, uh, an immense amount of new construction going up with mixed use. Uh, the nice thing about this is um, it's going to, I think, increase our um, commercial capacity, uh, especially it looks like there's going to be some new retail and restaurant coming in, um, which is something that while we already have in our district, uh, we need more of it. We, we hear that from people all the time. Uh, it's also going to present opportunities for upper story housing. And uh, we, we have some residential use in our district, but we could have more. Uh, we still have. Um, it's kind of surprising, but we still have some uh, second or third floor vacancies, and those could potentially be filled with uh, people who will shop at our stores, uh, use our services, and eat at our restaurants. Um, I happened to, uh, when I moved here, uh, I had a hard time finding a place to live in the area, and I wanted to be uh, close by work. As it turns out, I found a place literally around the corner, uh, which is wonderfully convenient. Uh, especially this week, my car's in the shop and I don't have to drive anywhere. So, um, but, uh, you know, I think there's been over the past, say, probably 15 years or more, uh, a real interest in, in cutting our commute times, in living closer to where you work. Uh, and, and COVID certainly accelerated that, the, the number of people who, who don't want to spend two plus hours a day in the car or, uh, you know, have the opportunity to, to do remote work. So um, that's kind of what we have going on in the district. Very, very active, uh, uh, a solid core of retail boutiques, um, each with their own individual personality. And Meredith can certainly talk more about that. Um, some really good restaurants down here. Uh, and it's, it's wonderful to hear from those restaurant owners that they want to see more. Uh, they don't see... Um, new restaurants coming in as competition, they see that as a compliment to what we have to offer in the district. Um, what I see in a broader sense is that uh, 
when, when so many of us were home for a long time, I think it gave us an opportunity to take a look at our physical belongings uh, and our physical surroundings and decide, um, here's an opportunity um, unlooked for, but still an opportunity uh, to take stock of what we have. What do we need to get rid of? of uh, how do we wanna change our, our housing? Um, what possessions do we have that are worn out that we can get rid of and, and replace with something new, something um, that we like a little bit better. And, and I think, you know, um, I think some of the pandemic um, economic uh, benefit payments probably helped spur that as well. There's, there's definitely, I think, uh, a boost in spending. And what I, what I hear from our retailers down here uh, is that uh, this is a record year for them. Um, and, and that's without even, you know, we're just dipping our toe into the holiday season right now. So I think that's gonna increase even more. Um, it's, I think it's been a time for people to really take stock of who they are and what they have and what they want to own. Um, and, and what I see is people are, re are replacing, um, I think they're replacing quantity with quality. Instead of owning a lot of stuff uh, and buying lots of big things, um, I think they're curating their, their lives a little bit more um, and picking and choosing things that are gonna last, things that speak to them. Um, and, and that's everything from uh, home decor to clothing, to um, experiential retailing, to the restaurants they go to. It's, it's not so much about um, more, more, more. Uh, it's, it's more about wanting a higher quality of life. And um, unfortunately, I think Valley Junction is really well poised to, to uh, take part in that. Boy, that, that is so true, Steve. And I, I know, um, boy, St. Kilda, since that opened up, was that about a year ago, maybe, Steve? That yeah, within the last year or two, yeah. Yeah, they've, they've just done a, a big business. Um, it's hard to find a table sometimes when you're, you know, going over there. And yeah, they, they do a good job. So, mm-hmm. Shows that the demand is there, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shows that the demand's there. Well, congratulations. So did you say there's 160 stores? Is that what I heard you say? About 160 businesses. They're, they're not all retail. And we have, you know, a solid number of, of service businesses, uh, professional offices, things like that. But okay. I would say we probably have the strongest retail district of any of the 54 Main Street Iowa communities. That is, that is incredible. So, I mean, what a great number that you represent 160 businesses in that just charming area. And the fact that you have a wait list is incredible. So, um, wow, that, that goes to show it's a high demand area. And I know you're, you know, the housing over there is, is high demand too. And just, just such a great walkable, beautiful area. So it's amazing. Enjoy it. Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You, you talk as if you've been in this role for years. So you beautiful job. <laughs> I feel like I fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you for your time, Steve. I'm excited uh, to talk to Al Lucinda right now. And Al, this is rush hour. This is lunch, right? So your, your, your restaurant's probably super busy. Here you are taking time. So thank you so much for for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Al Lucinda is owner and CEO of Big Al's Barbecue. And Al, we love your story about all the different stores you have in the region and your success story. So uh, we're excited to hear about you, your stores and uh, some trends that you're seeing and how we can help support your business. Well, <clears throat> Catherine, thank you for that. And Steve, it was, uh, it was uh, interesting in listening to what you've had, uh, had to share. And and uh, we're just actually just down the street from, from Valley Junction. So I consider us either a part of the community or even just a, a neighbor because we are just right on the corner of Grand and Railroad. So we are definitely, we are West Des Moines. We are, we are pro Valley Junction and would love to be part of all that excitement and growth. And, I, and we are feeling it. And there are some new families that we're seeing that are coming to our restaurant that have just bought homes in the area, not necessarily new homes and things of that sort, but just in the, even in the older areas. Um, so we're super excited to be in West Des Moines. We started our business in February, right in the middle of COVID. People were asking us, what in the world are you doing opening up a store in this middle of COVID? Meanwhile, uh, we had just um, ended a lease in the south side of Des Moines 
and uh, maintain a restaurant in Adel, Iowa, also known as Big L's Barbecue. And uh, super excited to see the amount of revenues that we have received since, since February. Now, this is the fourth restaurant I've opened. And so I've had some experience on what we have expected to um, achieve and to gain um, in terms of revenues and numbers. And we're way past to where I thought we were going to be. Um, so that speaks volumes of West Des Moines, but it also speaks volumes on our on on the location of where we're at. Again, on the corner of Grand and Railroad, Grand and EP True, that which is a very, very, very busy, busy neck of the woods. Um, so again, super excited. Uh, very interesting things that I find with you know having had restaurants first uh, in the east side of Des Moines, then the south side of Des Moines. Adel, Iowa, and now the west side of Des Moines. And, and as a restaurant tour, I think if you've reached the west side of, of, of the Des Moines area, you've kind of like reached the Mecca. Um, at least that's the way that I've felt. And definitely it's a different, it's a different breed of people. Uh, we're getting quite a few more people than we experience on the south side and the east side. So that's exciting. Um, would have never dreamt in a million years that I would be owning my own restaurants. But I will let you know that my first, the first place that I ever cut my teeth was in West Des Moines way back in the 90s, in which um, I ran a, a, a really popular restaurant back then called Jimmy's American Cafe. And that was where all the shaker, shakers, rattlers, and rollers used to hang out. And we were, I was part of that and, and was the uh, privy on trying to learn the industry back then and the type of people that were there, you know. Um, West Des Moines, let's, let's, let's face it, West Des Moines has its stereotype of the type of people that live there. And, and, and it's for a, a restaurant tour, it's a good thing. You know, those that have the extra money, those that have the, uh, you know, that, that have the, the, the different educations and things of that sort. So at the end of the day, it does, ha it does help us with people having that expendable income to spend in the, uh, in the restaurant or in the restaurant industry. Um, some interesting things, though, and I'll talk about trends in the restaurant industry and, 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 and how it's been really interesting, I'll use that word, uh, as to how it is for us to shift gears on the changing of how the industry has changed. And COVID has taken, taken a very, very big role in causing us to look at the way that we do business and recognizing the demands of what people want when it comes to eating, in particular eating out. Um, the biggest concern right now that we have, or the biggest uh, um, interesting thing for us is getting help. And I think, uh, I know, in speaking with other people that are in different industries, in particular our industry, we all share the same thing as the pool of people who, do we, who, we're, who we're pulling from. Um, and then the work ethic of the people that are working. And then for us, it's the age group of who we can actually pull from. So those are some really interesting things. Um, uh, for me, what I find really interesting, I don't know why it is, but I find that the work ethic in West Des Moines is better than the work ethic of the people of the South Side is better than the work ethic of the east side. Now that's interesting. However, I find the work ethic of I find the work ethic of the people of Adel, Iowa, in in rural Iowa, to be better than the work ethic of the people of the West Des Moines area. I don't know why that is. I've never really tried to study that. You know, my background I'm a behavioral scientist by trade, and if I did enough research, I'd probably be able to maybe at least theorize as to why, but I don't know, but that does definitely bring up some challenges. Uh, so first of all, it's, it's, it's the pool of people who we pull from. It's the amount of people that we can pull from. And then it's the loyalty of them staying. And so it's a really interesting day every day as to if number one, will they show up on time? Number two, will they show up? Number three, when they work, Will they actually work, and will they give us a hundred percent? So it's it's more than just trying to find people to work. It's also coaching them on trying to teach them life skills. 
And there's some people that are still, you know, they're still trying to learn the, you know, the please and the thank yous of, of, of communicating with each other, let alone trying to, trying to understand why it's important to work um, and things of that sort. And, and, and for, for, I don't know, for some people, it's, it's almost a pain for them to go to work, yet they need, the, they need the money for it. So how do you instill into these people the importance of work and the importance of self-worth and things of that sort? And a lot of scene, they think that if we offer them a lot of money, then by all means, we should be able to get, we should be able to get people. Well, as a behavioral scientist, I've, I've studied different theories and I've tried to instill them in my own business. And it's to some degree has worked a little bit, but there are four top things that people are looking for in their job or their careers. And money out of the four top, four top things is the last. Uh, so what are those things? Number one, people are looking for recognition in their work. They want to be recognized. They want to know that they did a good job. Even if it's, I showed up on time. They want to be recognized for that. I don't know why that would be such a big deal, but it is. Secondly, they want to know that, that uh, they can have time off. Having time off is a big deal, whether it be holidays, whether it be uh, paid time off, whether it be sick leave, what, what, what have you. Third, they want to make sure that the company is going to take care of them. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, do they have the option of having insurance? Will they have eye care? Will they have paid vacation? Will they have benefits? Things of that sort. Lastly is money. And so that's really interesting because I've paid people a lot of money and they haven't stayed, you know, and then, you know, you find, you try to fa figure out what those, what those, uh, uh, what those triggers are for each individual. And those are, you know, the four that I just told you are just generalization. So if I if you if I can instill those things, it seems to keep keep the current employees that I have. As far as getting new employees, it's like trying to pull teeth. I can't grow. I want to open one and two more restaurants. I almost opened up one in Clive through other things and not having enough employees. I can't do that. I bought a hundred and fifty thousand dollar food trailer to add to my other food trailer. Yay, I got it, but I can't I can't find anybody to help me to help me work it. So that's a tough thing. So enough about employees. I think that everybody else shares in, in whatever and shares in things. And that's a whole, a whole entire other talking uh, and conversation, which we maybe we'll have down the line that we already have. But the other interesting thing is how has retail restaurants, sit down restaurants changed? And it was told to me five years ago that the industry change in which for every dollar that is spent in the restaurant industry, 50 cents of that will be for takeout and to goes. And I didn't want to believe that, you know, all this real estate people to sit down, so forth and so on. So, and then two years ago, they said, Al, that number has changed to 80% or 80 cents of every dollar will be for takeout and, and delivery. COVID made sure that that happened. And so sure enough, between both my restaurants, we are experiencing anywhere between 50 and 80% of our, of our revenues for takeout. And so that's, that's, that's something new to me, um, which, you know, of which like the McDonald's of the world, they've got that down. Takeout, that's what they do. Um, so we've been able to, you know, work on that, but with that have come challenges. And the challenges of that is the increase in amount of takeout contain things, plastics of that sort. So there's that problem, very expensive. Secondly, you can't get it. They only allow you, like at Sam's Club, they'll only allow you to take to have so many boxes. So you're also limited on that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's take on and delivery that is actually now the majority of our business. And so we've had to adjust the amount of employees, uh, you know, that come in where you would uh, have three and four different food service on the floor and a couple of cooks where now it's, it's, you know, it could be one cook and two uh, food servers or one cook and one food server because the phone is ringing off the hook. So now that's had me to start thinking about investing into a phone system because of how big it is. And there's some restaurants that have really perfected it and I'm still learning. West Des Moines is one of those restaurants that definitely want to take out. West Des Moines is definitely, or West Des Moines in my restaurant is definitely one of those that people want take out and delivery. 
So now delivery is a new thing. And delivery, it creates a new opportunity, but they want 30 cents of every dollar. So that's interesting. And then now the cost of food has skyrocketed. For instance, pork used to be a dollar, pork butts used to be a dollar a pound last year. Pork butts now are about $3 a pound. Brisket used to be $1.89, $2.50 a pound. Brisket is now going to be as much as steak, $5.23 a pound. So how do we not raise our prices without making people upset? And even though people know that the gas, the cost of gas has gone up and the cost of pricing at the grocery store, they've seen it with their own eyes. They don't want us to raise our prices. Well, we're sorry, but it's just business. And we are a business. Yes, it's a touchy feel good business, but we are a business. So we are our prices and we're having to put into our, our menus that uh, subject to change because everything is subject to change. Our, our pricing has spiked. So um, lots of interesting things, lots of opportunities I feel, uh, especially with takeout and delivery, even though I'm complaining it sounds, there's, there's another opportunity because now that you know they don't have to take up the space within the restaurant. But it's also made me look at, well, maybe a smaller place makes more sense. So a lot of things going on. A lot, a lot of opportunities have, have been created. So, sure, those concerns. It's just business. But we're really excited to be in West Des Moines. And for those of you that are out here that, that, that are in with the other businesses, we do a lot of catering. I started my company with catering and would love to maintain that. I also have a food trailer that's for rent for your thing. So lunch and learns, you know, things of that sort, being able to being able to uh, uh, thank your thank your employees for a job well done, things of that sort. We would love to have that opportunity to be able to feed. So uh, with that, I think I'm done. Um, salesman by trade, so you can't shut me up. Al, you're amazing. This is incredible. And your story, congrats on your success, you know, your fourth restaurant. And, and we might quote you, um, you've reached the Mecca when you've reached West Des Moines. So that's <laughs> I saw our team go, yes, that's good. We love that. Oh, that's so great. Well, it's so good that, you know, the West Des Moines citizens have been very, very supportive of you. And that just warms my heart. That is so <coughs> good to know. Um, you know, finding that staff though, I know that's a pinch that golly, everybody's feeling and, and even from the containers, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And thank you for that perspective. It's so interesting. So you guys, when you have an event, call Al when you want to eat out go to Al's restaurant. When you want to take out, go to Al's restaurant. So this is wonderful. Your food is tremendous. And we're so, uh, so glad you're a, a key part of the West Des Moines Chamber family. So thank you, Al. Thank you for your reflections. Amazing. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Incredible. All right. So we are excited to hear from Rihanna Snyder. And Rihanna is sales executive with Heart of America Group. And so she represents a lot of hotels. We are excited about learning about all the different hotels and your role and how trends have changed. I mean, these last couple of years have been just amazing. So uh, glad you're here. Thank you for your time. Oh, we got you on mute, it looks like. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon. Thank you, Catherine, for the introduction and the West Des Moines Chamber and the other panelists for being on today. And everybody else that's um, watching in or listening in and, you know, um, gosh, big out. Yes, absolutely. I hear you. I feel you, um, the frustrations and Steve, I love Valley Junction. So G Migs and all the great shops down there. So thank you for sharing that. I, some new updates from you guys that um, I didn't know about. So I appreciate that. But yeah, as Catherine said, I'm Rihanna Snyder. I'm with Heart of America Group. Um, we are a very much hospitality industry. We are first and foremost based out of Moline, Illinois in the Davenport area. We've got a big presence out there. That's where it began, um, 70s with our machine shed, our first restaurant that we had out there. And the other only hotel that we ever bought and sold um, under our company. So Mike and Kim Whalen are our owners. Um, they are an amazing couple, family um, that has built this beautiful umbrella um, all across the Midwest, and we continue to grow. And you know, talking about um, just being like 
a little bit, you know, once you're, you know, in that industry, whether you have just hotels or just, you know, restaurants, um, our company, we are so well-rounded where we have built some car washes, Tommy's Car Wash in Waukee, and we have another one going up in Grimes. We have our new Hype Energy, where it's these energy drinks and coffee drinks um, in Waukee by there. So, you know, I will say with um, just experiencing last year and, and what we've been going through for almost two years is thank goodness that we're so well-rounded and, and be able to bring in revenue in different areas and not just in the hotels and not just in the restaurants. I think when this um, kind of all started, uh, we had no idea that we were gonna be closed for three months. Um, and then I would go to a hotel um, and not see anybody but the person delivering the mail. So um, just a lot, and again, like you said, Catherine too, is a lot is changing and that we're learning. and. Um, so I'm the sales executive for the company in the Des Moines market. And so right now I'm in one of our meeting spaces um, in Hotel Renovo uh, over by our Machine Shed restaurant. And I manage the sales for uh, Renovo, Revel, Hotel, and then Wildwood Lodge and Clive. And, but I'm also all over the board in our Des Moines area, cross-selling and getting out there and interviewing and building relationships and getting people excited about Heart of America Group. Um, some other places you might be familiar with is our Rewind Hotel um, in West Des Moines with our Johnny's Italian Steakhouse. So we have a huge presence in West Des Moines and do great chamber events out there. And I uh, don't believe they're quite open for lunch out there yet. Um, I should have probably double checked that, but um, just because a lot of companies are not back to work in the office. So lunches are a little difficult, um, but dinners they are, they have reopened out there. So we have all the Johnny's in the Des Moines market. Um, you're familiar with the machine shed, obviously. And then we've got a presence in Altoona as well too. Um, we've got our Burger Shed restaurant, which is a little spinoff of Machine Shed um, and Johnny's, and then our beautiful Marriott and um, our new Hyatt place out there as well. So beautiful area. If you haven't been out to the Outlet Mall, that's an awesome place to go and shop. Um, the holidays coming up. And um, on the south side and downtown, we have our AC Republic. Um, and AC, AC Republic on Grand down there. Great restaurant on the top floor if you have never been. And then on the south side are Johnny's and Doubletree by Hilton and in Fairfield Marriott. So that kind of covers the Des Moines area in a nutshell, um, but you can always get on our Heart of America group um, website and look at our full map and see different you know, things we're working on and commercial development in different states. So um, we have that big presence, um, like I said, in the Midwest as well too. So I kind of wanted to touch on um, just things that have kind of, um, that I've seen um, trend-wise is cross-training. Um, cross-training is so big, and it, if it's not the most important thing, it should be now. Um, I will say that that's how I kind of kept working, I said, um, because, you know, I was always the one, the employee that wants to know, just to be well-rounded in wherever I'm working. I wanna touch on different departments. I wanna note all the systems. I wanna know, you know, what that means, or, you know, maybe I'm not an expert in everything, but I will say that cross-training is so big. Um, being able to have that employee that you can count on, that's there, that's on time, is motivated and loyal, you know, let's try to promote them within, let's try to cross-train them and teach them everything you know, um, you know, because you never know these days, you never know. So, and I will say that too, like Al, you were saying with you know, being out ill and things like that when you're on even a shorter staff. Um, that way now you can count on that person that, you know, you have cross-trained and, and taught everything you know for the most part. Um, so I, I feel like that's one of the biggest things that I learned, um, still learning. I can work the front desk, I can do some billing, I can check people in, and I can answer the phone, I can help with housekeeping if I have to. So, you know, just being able to uh, jump up and be able to do all of those tasks is so important, um, I believe. Um, so, and wearing many hats, as we always say. Um, I have seen the trend for um, bigger cities um, that are losing business um, with sports groups, events, concerts, um, things we've never seen in the Des Moines market. 
Um, we're hearing a lot from, you know, these groups that are pulling from Minneapolis and Chicago and things like that, where they're just not sure about next year. They're not sure if they're going to be able to, you know, be at, you know, half capacity or whatever that looks like. Um, so I'm working a lot with Horizon Event Center, um, doing a lot of big sports groups. They're remodeling, they're renovating. Um, it's really big for this side of um, our um, town on the, with the hotels and the restaurants as well, too. Um, so, and also with, yeah, I wanted to touch on just having those boutique hotels um, where we are. And if you've never been, I'd love to give you a tour. Um, they're just gorgeous. And um, we have a lot of the smaller event spaces, um, you know, corporate meetings, corporate events. Um, you know, those bigger, uh, you know, events and meetings are maybe condensed way down now, you know, they are splitting them up and going to different areas of the country or different states or um, so we're seeing a lot of that and we benefit definitely from that those smaller groups, we can really um, cater to those smaller groups and provide our amazing, you know, catering and food and drink and think outside the box. Um, same with holiday parties. They're not just as big as they used to be. Um, they've cut those way down. So all of these things have been really a benefit for us and our hotels and on this side of the campus, as I call it. Um, same issues with staffing, as, as Al said, too. Uh, I think a lot with some of, like, for instance, Renovo, um, our staff has been here for 10 plus years even in housekeeping and um, our management. So we're very lucky. Um, we, we struggle with pieces of it, but our staff is very loyal and we're so thankful every day. Um, I think me being a, a, an executive and a manager, it's important for me to walk down the hallway and, and thank all of those um, you know, employees that we have, whether it's housekeeping, kitchen, whatever. Um, that's important to me. I think, you know, Al, you probably experienced that too. And, it's to have those relationships and keep them with your employees and thank them for all their hard work is so important. Um, so yeah, how you can kind of support me and my company and, and my role is come visit our hotels. Um, we have bars and cool lounge spaces like in Revel and Renovo that you don't have to be a guest in the hotel to come see us, um, have a drink, um, come over, bring your a client or a friend or enjoy some of our outdoor spaces with outside fire pits and bocce ball court. Um, maybe getting a little chilly for that maybe coming up, but um, still pretty nice to do some of those things. And, uh, you know, I anybody that'd like a tour or ever to see it, I'd, I'd be happy to show you and any of our Des Moines properties. So um, I think that kind of covers it. Hopefully I kind of, I got it. I, cover the Des Moines market at least. <laughs> that's great, Rihanna. I didn't know that you own the AC Hotel, which that's a gem of a hotel. That, yeah. Yeah, so that is, um, it's such a unique thing for Des Moines and property and, and to know that you can go, you know, up the elevator to this fabulous restaurant. And when it's nice out, they take half of the glass out and you can see Principal Park and, you know, it's just fun night out. Fun night out, yeah. Fun night out. That's one of our favorites. <laughs> if you guys have not been there, you have to go. It's just so, it's spectacular. And I actually love the main floor bar because it's not as crowded and you can yeah. play pool. And it's like, you have a little, you have a private bar there. I feel like I'm in, you know, Chicago or Las Vegas yeah. or something. It's so beautiful. So you guys have to check that out. Not that we want to steer you away from West Des Moines, but just, you know, maybe for, <laughs> maybe for an evening, right? That's okay. Spread the love around, right? So thank you so much for that. I appreciate that so much. And if you want to check out the Revel Hotel, Wednesday night, we have our West Des Moines Leeds event at the Revel Hotel. So you got to check it out. It's beautiful. And it's uh, from four to six. So everybody's invited uh, to come out and check the hotel and learn more about our business development group uh, that Tom Florian is in charge of. So, so we hope to see you there. So thank you so much for for that, that was wonderful. We Thank are you. excited to uh, talk to Meredith Wells. Meredith is co-owner of Momer, and she also leads our historic West Des Moines Steering Committee group, which is a group of citizens 
that are really talking about their opinions about Valley Junction, kind of helping to shape the area. And uh, we just love that there's such a nice variety of opinions uh, on that committee. And Meredith, you run that so beautiful, but thank you for taking the time. I know as a small business owner, this, is, uh, this can be a challenge. So thank you. No, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to make sure I was unmuted. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, know the invitation and being a part of this and for everything that you and your staff do for our amazing city of West Des Moines. Um, my mother and I started uh, Momer back the eight years ago, actually next weekend, we'll be celebrating eight years. So we're excited about that in Historic Valley Junction. Um, grew up in West Des Moines. And so uh, remember going to the tavern after football games when the Valley Stadium was still on 8th Street. Um, you know, got many a dance shoes at the Tiaco shop, went to the soda fountain with my parents. So it was a no brainer for us that when we wanted to start our store, um, that it would be in Valley Junction. We loved the um, historic charm, kind of that small town feel, um, but still accessible and walkable. Um, unique, vibrant events that happened there and just a really neat eclectic mix of businesses that were down there too. Um, so we started actually quite small. We started in a, five, a 500 square foot space, uh, moved a few years later into another location that's slightly bigger and a few years later moved again into where we are now into um, a two story, 4,000 square foot space. Um, we say it all the time that if you would have put our store in a, you know, anywhere else, probably in a strip mall or standalone, we may not have um, grown as quickly as we did, but through Valley Junction, um, getting foot tra traffic from other businesses and restaurants, um, it really allowed us to kind of plant our seed um, in West Des Moines. And we are we're, we're very grateful for that. Um, I serve, yeah, on the uh, historic uh, West Des Moines steering committee. I'm also the board president of Historic Valley Junction too. So that's one thing um, I really encourage people is getting involved in your community, um, giving back as well, um, has so many rewards. Um, some of the trends that we're seeing in Valley Junction right now are obviously increases in sales. Uh, last year, we saw a dip um, in, in Q1 and Q2, obviously with COVID, but in, by Q3, we were able to bounce back significantly and had an amazing fourth quarter with the holiday season. Uh, we saw and heard many people say, um, you know, for holiday season, we're just shopping small. Um, even Secret Santa gifts through corporations and businesses were the only stipulation is you have to buy an independently owned business. So that was really great to have that support. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, family gift exchanges um, had kind of that same concept and everything too. And what was so neat about that is it kind of created a foot in the door situation. So a lot of people hadn't experienced shopping small, you know, whether they had um, pre preconceived notions about, you know, everything's expensive, you know, um, product offering, not too sure what they're going to have. Um, by having them exposed to shopping small for the first time, um, really let down those walls. And we've seen a lot of repeat business from those first time shoppers in this last holiday season. So that is fantastic. We are getting those trends um, and sales are continuing even into this year. Um, you know, the first half of the year was just beyond amazing. People are still supporting the, the shop small movement and supporting the businesses down in here, Valley Junction. And like Steve said, many of us are reporting record numbers, even pre-pandemic. Um, so we're very excited about that. Increase in traffic is happening down here with obviously increase in residency. More businesses are wanting to come to the district. They see the growth, they see the vibrancy, and they want to be a part of that. And we want them to be a part of that too. We want to grow our district and be the best retail district in the state of Iowa. So um, especially for small independent businesses, we, we love our entrepreneurs and we want more of them. So, um, you know, online presence was also a big trend um, that a lot of people who didn't have websites for their stores quickly adapted and threw together last year. Um, we're seeing even an increase in online sales. But what's really interesting is a lot of people are pre-shopping. So they are looking at your website and determining, are you worth my time for me <laughs> in my busy schedule to get out and go to your store? So we hear that a lot is, oh, I looked at your website before I came. Um, 
that, you know, oh, I saw this online, but I want to come into the store and physically see the product. So while people are shopping online for the convenience and for the speed, um, you know, there are some great things about that. We've been able to kind of expand our markets and broaden our reach. So just outside of our community, now we're reaching all over the country and, and shipping things all over the country too, which is pretty phenomenal, pretty, uh, excuse me, phenomenal. Um, but there's still people that want to come into the store and they love visiting a store and experiencing the products and shopping in store. Um, you know, I'm sure we've all been victims of purchasing a product online. And it looks a certain way in the photo and you get it. You're like, this looks nothing like the photo <laughs> that, that I ordered. Um, so this way it gives them that confidence. You know, you can still pick out what you're liking um, and they receive, you know, better customer service. Um, we can suggest similar products to get add-on sales for that um, and added benefits like gift wrapping or other perks from, from shopping in-store and shopping small as well. Um, also, they get to get it that day too, as opposed to waiting, you know, a couple days for it to ship and we're even noticing shipping delays too. Um, there's a certain online retailer that has been taking a little bit longer to ship. I won't mention who, but... <laughs> Uh, we actually got complimented um, that when someone orders something online, we ship it to them. They're like, wow, you got it faster here than Amazon Prime. So we, we live up to, we love that. Um, so that's really exciting to have those increase in online sales. Um, and again, to be able to expand our market as well. Um, you know, one thing, a couple of things I think we're, we're looking for support is you know staffing we're not immune to the staffing issues as well with retail um there's actually been a couple opportunities that we had to turn down because we didn't have enough staffing so doing pop-up events or holiday events um we just we couldn't spread ourselves too thin especially with having a two-story floor you know making sure there's coverage on both of those floors has kind of limited us with some of those opportunities with lack of staff. Um, so we have some great friends and family that are stepping up with us for the holiday season. Um, you know, and also too with, you know, online presence and doing our own marketing and doing our own online fulfillment and customer service, because we strive to have excellent customer service um, standards and making sure everyone is um, attentive to our customers. Um, we're doing more with less people. And so that is, is kind of a struggle as well. Um, but, you know, hey, <laughs> being a small business owner, we're, we're, we don't say no and we will do what we have to do to make it work. Um, supply chain issues are a huge issue for retailers right now. Um, shipments are not only getting delayed, but some products aren't showing up at all. Um, and as of August, one of our top selling gift items for the holiday season was already on back order until 2022. So for, yeah, it's kind of uh, people come and ask, oh, are you gonna have those? But like, actually we got one shipment in for the, because they were back order from the previous holiday season, got one shipment and then they already went on back order again. So we're having to adapt. Um, you know, in our store, especially we, um, love visual merchandising and we create collections and we buy our products based off of how we're going to display them and making sure we have a nice full collection. So we've probably gotten about half of our holiday shipments in, which normally we get those in, um, by August. And so they receive their checked in their floor ready to go. So that way, when we close down and do our holiday floor set, we are able to put those things out. So um, this year, you know, there's been a big push for shopping sooner. So we actually went ahead and put out what we had, even though we didn't have full collections. Um, so we're able to adapt and just say, you know, when the rest of the items come in, we'll go ahead and put those out too. So it'll be kind of like, like a, a restock. So we're trying to have a positive mindset about it and just kind of roll with the flow um, since it is kind of out of our control. We've been looking at other vendors, you know, and talking with our vendors, you know, what do you have in stock? Let's get orders and hopper ready to go. So that way we can um, drop those. We have significant um, gift items on the floor for people to shop as well. Um, you know, we've also even looked at more local makers. So, um, you know, whether it's bringing in a local jewelry maker, local candle makers, local men's grooming products. Um, so that way we can have kind of a workaround for those supply chain issues as long as their inventory is fine. And then also allows us to support our other um, small business uh, family as well. Um, so that's kind of the 
kind of some issues <laughs> that have been going on in retail as well. Oh, another thing, um, bags, shopping bags have been really tricky to get a hold of. Uh, we normally have our paper bags that are printed with our uh, names on them, but with the increase in um, to-go food preparation, we're seeing a, a shortage of um, bags. So Al, I'm blaming you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's just been really odd the amount of things that are coming up as backordered or shortages. Um, but again, we're just kind of getting creative and finding some work workarounds and trying to stay positive about everything. Um, another thing that we've kind of noticed in retail and hospitality in general too, and I think especially with some of my um, friends that own restaurants, is customer interactions have changed a bit. Um, seeing kind of some, how do I put this lightly? Some rude, if not hostile people more than we have in the past. Um, and I think people's defenses are up. You know, everyone went through a lot last year. People's anxieties are up. Um, you know, their fight instincts are triggered. Um, so that's been kind of another thing to kind of have to deal with on top of coming out of pandemic. You know, last year, instead of customer service people being kind of, you know, service driven, um, and here, we're here to help you. We had to be in a role of kind of rule keeper. And hey, here are these, um, you know, safety protocols that we're enacting now. So kind of that power dynamic shifted and pe some people I think had issues with that being kind of told what to do. Um, so we've noticed kind of some, some blowback, so to speak from last year and kind of carrying over to this year, um, you know, with increased anxieties. Um, and then here we thought, oh, everything's kind of returning to normal. Oh, but wait, we have staffing shortages. We have product shortages. We have delivery times um, taking longer. We have prices increasing. So not everything's back to normal and there's that dissonance that's happening again. So it can be very frustrating to people. Um, you know, and I think it's kind of sometimes it's a displaced anger um, and they're taken out on those encounters with behaviors and comments. Um, people maybe aren't filtering themselves as, as they used to, um, whether it's on the internet, um, people feel like they can kind of say anything, um, they no longer have to guard themselves, and then that's transferring into public life as well. So that is definitely uh, kind of a new challenge. We're kind of noticing, even my mom the other day, we're like, are people getting a little bit more free with their comments now? <laughs> so um, again, we always want to create a positive environment in our store and very welcoming to people and not kind of engage um, and provoke any of those behaviors anymore. But it is just something, and we're very fortunate that we haven't had any like bad, bad situations, but I have heard of, you know, wait staff getting spit on and everything <laughs> or, or worse. So yeah, it is definitely um, a new world out here in the retail environment. Um, but like I said, those are kind of few and far between. For the most part, customers are very supportive of small businesses. Um, you know, I think one thing that we can do is continue to make the shopping experiential and create those positive interactions for people. Um, people are craving interaction. They've been cooped up for a year. So we have to try to do all we can to make those experiences positive. Um, and that's what's great about Historic Valley Junction. You go shopping. Um, you can stop by a gallery, you can paint your own pottery, you can make your own candle, and then while your candle is curing, you can go shopping again. Um, you can then top off your day with a dinner and a cocktail at our amazing restaurants down here. Um, and, and, and also, too, we get a lot of foot traffic from all the other businesses down here which is great. And so I always say a win for one business is a win for all of us down here. Um, and we hear all the people time saying that there's always something new down here. There's always something new to experience down here. So we're grateful for that. Um, and then as a retailer, I always say, get engaged with your community. It not only builds your customer trust and commitment to the retailer, um, but it also lessens the importance of that perceived value of products that you sell. So local retailers, if you build a stronger customer relationship through the community, they're going to come back to you, whether it's getting involved and providing, um, giving back to our communities by supporting local nonprofits, uh, sponsorship community events, partnerships with other local retailers and providing a face for your business as well. I love it, Meredith. Just incredible. And I'm thinking with everybody we have here on this 
event, maybe Rihanna wants to start a boutique small hotel in Valley Junction because you were mentioning you can eat here, you can, <laughs> right? You could uh, shop, dine to your heart's content, and of course go to go to Big Al's, take a little walk to the hall, take a long, you know, walk to Valley Junction, and uh, there'll be a wouldn't that be kind of fun? So I don't know. Rihanna, maybe a little boutique hotel in Valley Junction, maybe that, uh, Steve, what do you think? That'd be a blast. <laughs> I could run it. We could do a little boutique inside there, events, the whole thing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be neat? Well, if you yeah. look at the Valley Junction pictures back in the day, there used to be a small hotel um, down there. Meredith, you probably, and Steve can probably speak a little bit more to that, but there used to be at one point a, uh, a hotel down there back in the you know 1890s I think so yep, right next door yeah it is really it is the sort of thing and you know I think with the travel industry has seen uh all the, everything they've been through people are looking for day trips and overnight trips so so mm -hmm. that boutique hotel model I think is is something that we we're missing that we would be a great fit it really would be a great fit. So if anybody knows of anybody with a couple million dollars to spare, um, I think that'd be great. We need to have a little event venue down there too, where there's some bands, right? To, you know, bring in some bands and that would be really cool. I am, I am all on board for that. And it's interesting, Meredith, when you're talking about, um, you know, people's behavior, maybe, maybe Al can help us understand because Al's a behavior scientist, behavioral scientist. So Al, why is everybody so upset lately? <laughs> you know, that is interesting and, and, and it's true. Uh, people are, they are upset. And, you know, th it was interesting that, you know, it could be some, some pent up stuff, but I, I tell you uh, with, with social media, it, it definitely allows you to be free and to be hiding underneath the veil of a, of a screen. Um, definitely that, but yes, we found that people want to fight. Uh, there, and it's not a lot of them, but they want to fight and it's, and it's left over. But if you, what I've found is that has brought, brought them right back down to earth. And if you let them know, you know what, you're probably, you probably work, you're probably experiencing the same thing, but we're short staffed and we don't like it. And you know what? They will come right back down to earth. Mm -hmm. They will, they mm -hmm. will come right back down to earth if they are working they'll mm -hmm. they'll recognize it and they and and that that seems to work for us it's not an excuse it's the truth you know but yeah. i think the pent up the pent up pented upness of the of of the pandemic has done that and then things that are breaking out again with the with with covid and the, the being free to say whatever they want on social media and being gutsy about it yeah i think so you know people want to people want to they think they can be heard and whatever but it's, well, it's very, it's very interesting. The moral of the story is give everybody some grace, right? It's uh, nobody's perfect. Everybody That's knows all. the supply chain, short staffed. Yeah. We all see it in the news, hear it in the news every day. So yeah, yeah well, it's not new. Think, yeah, it's not new. And uh, just thank you, everybody on this call today for your time. I know how busy you are. I know how busy life is, but Congratulations on your success. It sounds like overall, everybody's had great success. There might've been some dips, right? But we're, we're coming out of it great and stronger than ever. And so that's, what, that's why West Des Moines is amazing. I mean, look at us just doing so well, uh, serving our community and, and trying to uh, be the best version of ourselves that we can be. So thank you so much. And on that note, make sure that you vote for Best of the West. This is our second annual West Des Moines Chamber, City of West Des Moines, Best of the West Awards presented by Arion. And there are 50 categories. You can vote every day. So you have best retailer, best hotel, best restaurant. So uh, Bailey put the link in the, in the chat. Thank you, Bailey. So uh, make sure you spend time today and tomorrow and the next day and the next several days after to vote for your best everything in West Des Moines because we are so excited to, uh, to really shout loud and proud our wonderful people, our wonderful establishments like yourselves. So, so thanks again for everybody being on this call. Thank you to Bankers Trust for being our sponsor of the series. We really appreciate their support so much and have a beautiful chamber day. Thank you, team. I love you, Bailey, Nicole, Tom, Anna, and Kara. I'm trying to recognize you. Al said you want recognition. I love you guys.
Love you. <laughs>